Hey everyone, John Anson here. Today we are in Craigavon, Northern Ireland, just a bit kind of southwest of Belfast, here at the Roadhouse doing a fish and chip challenge. This in fact is Ireland's, and especially Northern Ireland's, biggest fish and chip challenge. It features over 50 ounces of fish, or some of their chips or fries, so it's fish and chips, you know, fish and fries, however you want to put it. Um, also, there's some mushy peas there, and yeah, there's, uh, I'm sure I'm kind of missing some details, but ultimately I know we're going to have 30 minutes to complete the challenge or to get the meal for free. Um, so really hoping we can do that. I believe it was about a 50 pound or 60 pound meal if I'm not mistaken. But anyway, in the quest for that free meal, this place actually won best fish and chips a number of times, which is super interesting. So, hey, let's go have some fun. Let's eat some food, really cool place. They also have a burger challenge. Um, but yeah, let's see if we can do this and defeat this massive English fish and chip challenge from the United Kingdom. Can I call it English? No, Irish. Irish fish and chip challenge from the United Kingdom because Northern Ireland is part of the United Kingdom. So that guys, let's go eat. All right, everybody's here are all the fish, over 50 ounces of fish in front of you, which is awesome. We do have a portion of their chips all along the side here, a thing of their mushy peas, and I do have some tartar sauce, of course I have some lemon, I have some ketchup over there, but those are not required. Those are just the additions. That is the ketchup and tartar sauce. Also get some vinegar for those who like vinegar. Lemon is not required either. So yeah, guys, like I said, giant challenge. It is cod, looks awesome. They've won best fish and chips here in all of Northern Ireland multiple times. So at that, it's gonna rock and roll, I'm excited. Um, they are fried in a beef fat, which is very different than we often get in North America, which is pretty cool. So I'm excited to dive in, give this a shot. Like we said, Ireland's biggest fish and chip challenge. Let's get started. We also have a proper dish of ketchup. Definitely a big one. You know I'm all about that ketchup life. Let's get it going. Uh, the fish just fall apart. Super flaky, super delicious. I'm ready. So how we get started? Let's say the count of have a five, four, three, two, one. Cheers. Let's eat. You can take it. Take the side. Thank you. Mmm, woo! The flavor on that fish. Super crispy. Battered, delicious light flaky. And that cod. Such a meatier fish. Really hard to come by in North America. I don't really have any place for my water bottle. It fills up the whole frame. Hey everyone, welcome to this video where today we are here doing a very, 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 very highly requested type of challenge, a fish and chip challenge, and a fish and chip challenge in the United Kingdom. In fact, this is Ireland's and Northern Ireland's biggest fish and chip challenge. So when I heard about it, I knew I had to come try it out, and here we are today. Man, I'm good. Charmin's tartar. I do find the tartar across the pond different when we have it in North America. It tastes different. Not a bad way. Just a little different. So we were in the Belfast area in Northern Ireland, and for those of you who are not aware, Northern Ireland is actually a different country than Ireland. Um, so I actually have some footage at the end of this video of Ireland you definitely will not want to miss. So when it came to this actual challenge, we kind of said the specifics, or at least the start of it. So we had over 50 ounces of fish. We had probably about two pounds of chips and or fries. And I gotta say, the fries or the chips they do at these fish and chip shops, this is the that's what I'm gonna refer to them as. This style of chip being a fish and chip style chip, if that makes sense. Like a chippy. A chippy is a place that serves basically takeout fried food. This is like a chippy style chip, like a chippy get at chippies. That was a lot of saying chips and chippies, but long story short, 
This kind of french fry is like a french fry I have never had in North America. They, uh, we've had them here with fish and chips. I've had them any other place in the United Kingdom or Europe. We had fish and chips. And I gotta say, you know what? This is not my favorite style of chip. Well, that ketchup and tartar mix, Ooh, I love that. Amazing. How crispy that fish is. I've got free 20 m Just stress the camera a little bit. I think my tripod is just moving. Scott, can you kind of tighten the legs? Yeah, it's, it's falling. Can you brace it? Just tighten the legs? It's on the left, on this side. It's one of them. Well, let's try these chips. I'll be adjust it. As long as you fall. Technical difficulties, try to make sure the camera doesn't fall. Very, very good though. You've got the sort metrics behind me. Let's get back to this fish though. That's what everybody came here for. Look at that. Look at the size of that. Ooh. Beautiful. It's like huge. Mm. Ooh, ooh, ooh. I love that. And if you've ever been to the United Kingdom and have had a, this style of french fry or chip, you will know what I'm talking about. And or I guess you could have had them elsewhere. But it's almost like eating mashed potato sticks. So they're not actually like really bad I guess they're just not my favorite style of french fry I prefer ones with like a crispy outside almost kind of that like not quite hollow inside but not full of mashed potatoes these are like mashed potato sticks essentially coming on five minutes in I feel like I'm the word delicious but that's kind of the standard they have over here, at least in my experience with fish and chips, which is, hey, it's nothing wrong with it. It's just more like, in my opinion, having mashed potatoes with your fish and chips or with your fish. Um, when it came to the actual fish, oh my gosh, it was good. Again, a standard over here in the United Kingdom is to have cod. In North America, you never, ever, ever get cod for like fish and chips. It's just, I guess, too costly, too hard to come by no matter what it is. But literally I've had like deep fried cod once in my whole life in North America. And everywhere in the UK, that is the standard. The standard in North America, both Canada and the US is usually like either a bassa, either a, uh, a, a haddock, um, and or a pollock, um, kind of like, again, still a white fish, but a lot less meaty and a little bit more, I guess, light and flaky, if that makes sense. Nonetheless, um, like I said, super delicious. It was like a treat to have this deep fried cod and definitely a treat to be having this fish and chips. And this, in fact, was the best tasting fish and chips, or I should say the best tasting fish I had while we were over here in the UK and Europe. And so I understand why they indeed have won an award like many years in a row for the best fish and chips. Just great tasting batter, cooked right, no complaints. And then we had a, the dish of mushy peas. Mushy peas are a very um, standard kind of side dish and or like dish you would have with fish and chips in the United Kingdom. For those who are not familiar, um, they are literally basically mushed peas. Cooked peas, like canned cooked peas, mushy. Um, and they're kind of more, if this makes sense, like you know how there's kind of the like split peas you can get, like if you bought like split peas, it's like that kind of style of pea. It's more of a um, harder, almost more legume style pea, rather than like a pea you would get in like a bag of carrots and broccoli and stuff in North America that are kind of squishy and soft. So it's quite textured. Seven and a half and ten. Go on, well. Just 
they did offer to salt and vinegar all my fish and the chips at the start. I told them to go ahead with the salt. Um, I had the vinegar on the side as we go. Mm. They also brought me what appears to be a curry sauce to try. Thank you so much. Oh, you know, that's the thing over here. Curry sauce and fish and chips. Anyway, that was a lot of words. That was a lot of information. Um, but, I mean, that is the experience. That is the United Kingdom experience and how all these subtle differences exist when I compare the food items and, you know, things which we might consider standards from, you know, the United Kingdom and North America, which I think is just so cool. And I'm always so excited to come experience these different cultures, experience different people's tastes, cuisines, and I love and really try to respect them um, the best I can. And I'm very appreciative whenever I actually get to do so. So for everybody in the UK, thank you. I'm Phil Hopper, guys. No short of food. I had already eaten today, so I was quite full. Um, if you cannot tell, I am definitely already having lots of difficulty, not to mention how honestly big this was. Like, this was 50 ounces of fish before it was breaded and deep fried, and I guarantee you it was heavy again, and we had lots of food here. So with only 30 minutes to complete it, I knew I was pretty much going to have to really, eh, let's say focus, um, do what I could, because I was just very, very, very full, um, despite it being a absolutely delicious meal. So pretty much, so I guess that's the majority of the information. Um, we definitely did a uh, burger challenge here as well at this roadhouse. Um, so definitely you'll want to check out that video as well. And at that, everybody, ultimately, let's tune on in, see what we can do. And let me know down below if you like vinegar or tartar sauce with your fish and chips. Ten minutes done. Massive pieces. The last one. I'm thoroughly enjoying that for sure. Swallowed something funny. Alright. Ooh, let's finish this fish out. Pull the chair. Delicious, but wow. Love food, my bag's right now too. Try to get this done. And here's this curry sauce that he gave me. Curry sauce is very common with uh, the fish and chips. On this side of the pot, so it's rock and roll. Let's try this. Mm. Like chicken silver? It is good. It's uh, mild, not really spicy, but it tastes like curry. Kind of like a gravy. Definitely quite a bit of fries here. I'm mean, exceedingly large because they're so thick and dense. 
Nice human set. We've got these down. Woo. Handful of chips left. Bless your peas. I'm feeling that very full. Almost to everybody. Almost. Show the show. That's All right, everybody. Come on, try two minutes. Ooh. Delicious. Thoroughly enjoyed that fish. Got the peas here. Let me get those now. Oh man, very really good. I'm oh, very full. I'd be lying if I said I didn't have a lot of pressure in my test sides right now. Maybe a little bit of clenching going on. So, the fries are better focus. Woo! But. Tastes great. Let's get this done. Mushy peas. Which shows you're not familiar. I basically cook canned peas mushed up. Mushy. All right, everybody. That's a little bit. That's the last. Leave no doubt. Uh-huh. Something great. I'll just do something bad. Um, welcome to the and I was waiting. I think we had 24.50. Holy crap, guys. I mean, I'm full. I'm very full. That was very, very delicious. I really did enjoy the fish and chips. I see why they have won uh, the awards. It was very, very tasty. Um, I had no complaints. A lot of fries. A lot of, uh, well, there's a reasonable portion of mustard peas. A lot of, a lot of fish. Excuse me. Oh, that was a burp. I need to come out. I got some air in me a little bit. I see what I get a little more out. I'll come out in a sec. But like I said, everybody, huge thanks to staff here. That'd be super awesome. We're out. It's a really cool spot. It is mostly takeaway, but they do do food challenges. So, like I said, don't do their, uh, they have like a burger challenge, for example. Don't do it. Hit them up. Most of that, guys, found to get a meal for each. Pretty cool. Whew, I'm very full. I'm very, very full. I know they also deep fried chocolate bars and stuff here, but I'm not in the shape for dessert right now. I am definitely very full. But, uh, yeah, guys, really enjoyed it. No complaints. So with that, of course, next time, say happy other hungry, happy eating. Northern Ireland, Ireland in general, more loudly, is real cool. And that's about that. So until next time, appreciate it, guys.
Have a little bit. Alright everybody, we made it to downtown Dublin. Downtown Dublin. We got a big city hall behind us which looks awesome. We have uh, so many other sites around. We got cathedrals and buildings and famous bars and all that stuff. So uh, let's get a rock in. Let's go see what Dublin has to offer in the relatively short period of time we have nonetheless, but very, very cool looking so far. And there's another big cool looking building. Don't know what it is. Followed by another cool looking building. I love the old copper tops where they turn bright green. I don't think they anticipated it doing so, but definitely some uh, world famous monuments are more noted because they're now green, like the Statue of Liberty. So we stumbled upon Dublin Castle, which I guess is right around here. Maybe we're, I don't know where it is, somewhere around here, but anyway, here we got a big courtyard, uh, which apparently may be part of the castle. The official, like, actual main castle is closed right now, but, yeah, apparently, Dublin Castle. Looks cool nonetheless. And through the courtyard, guys, this is looking a little bit more castle-like, to say the least. So definitely this is more of Dublin Castle. Definitely big towers. I really like the architecture. I don't know if this is, again, almost this looks like a cathedral, really? Like, arguably? We'll see what uh, what it all has to have. But this looks very, either a lot more modern or just incredibly well kept. I don't know which is which, but maybe we'll find out. And that building, it, my, uh, my learned look of chapels is correct. We have the Chapel Royale, which apparently was uh, opened in 1814. So still pretty old, pretty impressive but it replaced a earlier church, which is pretty cool. So, voila. And here we have the Dublin Gardens. I guess maybe that's like a traditional way of spelling Dublin. But guys, gorgeous. Look at this, this looks like straight out of the movie. This is like an Alice in Wonderland courtyard is how I'd describe it. I mean, just look at this. Look at the beauty of that architecture. I mean, that is, Definitely a little little dated nonetheless. They have some uh, paths or whatever through here, some designs. We have a large variety of different flowers and gardens. I know there is a water fountain on the other side of this here as well. Uh, like right here, that's a memorial garden. Let's see what this looks like. That's cool. With some uh, big, huge pieces of glass. Uh, it says a reflection on the sudden loss and suffering of the families of those honored. Interesting. I don't really know what I'm looking at, but it is very pretty, nonetheless. So here we have like definitely a more like traditional castle wall. Uh, it connects to this here, which leads into the card park and all the other areas we're seeing. So it kind of seems like they took what was the original castle, like this here, and have really kind of, well, or at least fixing it, modifying it, modernizing it. I don't really know exactly, that's kind of it. There's still obviously like, I mean, this is an older passageway and there's lots of little cool things to see around, but obviously like the courtyards, that was part of the castle, everything we've really seen. So we'll continue to kind of scope around Dublin. And we're outside the Christ Church Cathedral Dublin, which is very gorgeous. I really do like it. I definitely feel this is a little bit more like kind of that gothic, medieval kind of architecture, kind of like we saw in like Edinburgh, for example. We got bells, it is seven o'clock. We have a monument of somebody sleeping here. I think this is to show, you know, the welcomeness. But yeah, this is actually very, very pretty. Gorgeous right now, I love the architecture. And again, I don't know when it was erected, but very, very, very good condition. 
what else is famous about this church is this little passageway, this little connecting bit, very picturesque, connecting to this other kind of churchish thing. And who else is Dublina? This is the heart of Viking and medieval Dublin. Pretty cool. I like this though. It's just the architecture is so unique, like straight out of a movie. Harry Potter style or something similar. So here we have, which I don't really know what it is. <laughs> Maybe it's the, it might be the old like Dublin wall or whatever they called it. It definitely looks pretty much like a castle almost, like whatever it is, but pretty much you've just been walking around and the amount of interesting things we've seen. Yeah, it looks like Dublin city wall and gates. That's what that sign says. So I don't even know like what half this is, but it looks pretty cool. This is accessibility point. I don't know. Dublin, your cool city. Okay, so we just ran into an amazing gentleman who told us a lot of history. So I'm gonna summarize this really quick. So that is the old Dublin wall. That's where the end of Dublin used to be. Outside of Dublin, like literally on the other side of that street, used to actually be an island. And that street we were on was called Cook Street. That was like the outside of the city, you know, the rich, safe, whatever good people would be inside the less desirable people would be outside. We are now technically inside the wall through the park over here. This is a Protestant church from 1190. And then right beside it, you can see the front of it there, is a Catholic church from the Polish Catholic populations. If you're not familiar with kind of Ireland in general, there is a long history of uh, Catholic Protestant dispute, debate, issue. I guess you could say. So apparently they still operate, and uh, there is, we, although it's closed now, you can go into a certain part, like in that area there by the gate, uh, or where, where the wall we showed you. In there they have like what they call like a lucky stone or something, it's supposed to be 4,500 years old. Apparently they used to rub it and then drink water, and it would kill people because it's mineral. Uh, so kind of interesting. But yeah, really interesting. We'll kind of show you this little view up here. But we just learned a lot from that guy. Apparently the oldest pub in Dublin is called the Blazing Head, which is right around the corner. We'll head over there. It's apparently also started in the 1100s. And just phenomenal to think that, you know, how old this is. Again, that wall dates back to the, you know, 1200s or whatever. And uh, apparently, which is, we can see the top of it right over there, that building there. That's the Dublin City Council. They actually kept part of the original wall in the modern building. So pretty cool. I don't know what stone this is but that's another interesting stone so yeah how wow well, well anyway dublin now you know and here's the old catholic church we're talking about huge crazy crazy architecture and monumentous and we accidentally came upon another uh, church called the church of saint augustine and john the baptist huge guys these are just giant lots of churches around that's for sure and here we have the Brazen Head guys. This is Ireland's oldest pub, apparently dating back to the 1100s. I don't know if this is quite the original stone, but apparently they have some of the, like, the original wall and everything, which is pretty insane inside. Yeah, very, definitely very, excuse me, definitely very, very busy. But pretty cool, guys. I mean, definitely an old timey looking pub. You can see the, how old that wall is. Definitely pretty cool, guys pretty cool and here we have the Fitzsimons famous temple bar arguably I think this is probably the most famous bar in Dublin uh, even though it's not the oldest it is definitely one of the most famous nonetheless pretty cool all right everybody cool site we have the merchants arch looks pretty cool then we have the famous Happeny Bridge Happeny Bridge so basically it's a bridge crossing the Liffey River pretty straightforward as it is it is made of iron and that's that and beautiful view on the river Liffey running right through Dublin and here's some big other cool memorial thing we saw I'm not gonna stop too long but some gentleman on top and lots of angels around him so I imagine he's a important figure it's the and we're in the area they call the Clary's corner quarter I think uh, here's a Jim Larkin statue. Ooh, I'm not sure who he was. Another cool building right here. You know what this is in front of us, Scott? I don't 
don't didn't show up. So it's something about Easton. Yeah, Easton something. This is a very large building nonetheless. A very cool looking part of town. Uh, it's this is definitely a little bit less like well, there's lots of restaurants here, I guess, but less shops. This is called the Modern Irish History. Okay, this is the museum, big museum. And the main site in this area is what they call it, I think it's the spire. Basically, it's this pillar right behind me. Because it is incredibly, 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 incredibly tall. Like, honestly, you can... I mean, you can see the top, but like, barely. It is, uh... I don't know what's about it. It's actually angled, it's tilted, which is funny. But yeah, big thing. <laughs> 